All right, hello ladies and gentlemen, Brian Stratton here with a Xbox 360 video for you, the viewer. Xbox 360 and I got a lot of time together. It was a huge part of uh, my life in the seventh generation of consoles. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Alright, so obviously Xbox 360 was made by Microsoft. It was released November 22nd, 2005, again as part of the 7th generation of uh, home consoles. It was later discontinued on April 20th of 2016. As many people know, it sold 84 million worldwide, and it was pretty much beaten down the uh, PS3 for most of that generation. Um, those sales figures uh, are as of June 9th of uh, 2014. It was powered by the 3.2 GHz PowerPC Tri-Core Xenon CPU, and it had 512 meg of RAM. Um, it was GDR3, and that was clocked at 700 uh, MHz. It had some other stuff, like the 500 uh, MHz ATAI um, Xeno's graphics chip and it sported up to 5.1 Dolby Digital through either TOS link or via HDMI. It's something I definitely utilized because I literally had a 5.1 setup for most of it. Another great thing of it is it was back compatible with f almost 500 original Xbox titles and that's kind of a feat in itself. And hopefully the music that I got right now is not too loud, but let's get on in the game, shall we? So this game, Alan Wake, probably easily like top five favorite games of all time. I would so love for them to make another one. This game was released uh, May 18th, 2010. It was developed by Remedy. It's an action-adventure, modern horror uh, survival game. It has a meta score of 83, and to me that's just too low. Should have been about 100. It's literally, to me, that good of a game. I mean, it takes place up in the, the Pacific Northwest. You're a rider, and basically you got to fight this darkness that feeds on artists and stuff and literally stuff that you do ends up like coming true stuff that you dream it's an absolutely insane game it's well voice acted amazing amazing story great characters uh great soundtrack the music in between each one's like the dude that's rolling around there. He's, he did a great voice acting job. Kind of a lot like the uh, one of the support guys in Bayonetta, uh, which I will be covering in this. Um, after each chapter, there's like a great cutscene, a great um, song that's played, and there's an ad playing right there. Okay, but yeah, just a great game. I would love for there to be a sequel. All right, moving on to Alan Wake's America's Nightmare. Now, this is something I didn't initially know existed because in my six years for the second duration I was in Germany, most of that time I didn't even have internet, so I wasn't connected to Xbox Live. And this game released February 22nd of 2012, and this is why 
about a week after that is when I retired from um, the military. Well, started my retirement. I was still active for another few months. But uh, no clue it was out. First time I played it was probably a couple years later on PC. But I did want to include it. It has a meta score of 76. And with most of these games, if it's my personal gameplay footage, you may just see me running around with my head cut off because I'm like kind of trying to relearn the controls because I have not played that particular game in um, years. But it's a really great game. I want to say for the 360, it was on the arcade, Xbox Live Arcade. And it was probably about five or ten bucks not sure how i ended up getting it on um my 360 but a lot of these games that i am recording footage of are either on the xbox one or the 360. so moving right along to my favorite probably in the assassin's creed series and that was the first one where your altair um, in the Middle East, back during the Crusade time. Just amazing game. It uh, released November 13th of 2007 with a Metascore of 81. And it was developed by Ubisoft. It's an action-adventure, historic, open-world game. Just an amazing, amazing game. It takes place during the uh, Third Crusade. And this, I wish that, like... I would have had a save file um, which would have been later on to where you could actually see how amazing it is um, my capture card doesn't support 4k or 4k playthrough and this game on back compat on Xbox one you can play 4k and it's a absolutely amazing so there's kind of like a lot of distortion that's because this is when Desmond is first in the, the animus and it's just too much for him but it's a absolutely great game um i probably would have loved two in the nco trilogy a lot more but i just hated the voice acting um other than that that was also a great game but yeah metascore 81 um probably kind of on the low end for that series but absolutely great franchise uh franchise I know I could have probably picked uh, like Black Flag, but keep in mind some of these, uh, pretty much all these games are games that I mainly played on the 360 or eventually played on the 360. There's a lot of games in these series that I may have only played on PC, which uh, is why I'm not including maybe a specific title. So. The next game is uh, Batman Arkham City. And when it comes to Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, I probably play these on both console and PC. I had a Alienware um, after they had sold a Dell, sadly. Uh, back in 2009, I bought one which had NVIDIA graphics. So I was able to utilize the Fizz X on that, opposed to my desktops, which had um, Crossfire, my uh, laptop had SLI, and so I couldn't use the Fizz X. But huge difference between PC in those games and 360. I still played them on 360, but uh, yeah, a piece, the PC was a much better experience, and I'm surprised how many ads they're giving me on that um, the music there and I'm gonna slightly tone that down in case it's too loud but yeah so this game released October 18th 2011 uh, developed by Rocksteady Studios action adventure fantasy open world Metascore of 94 um, basically all these games did great uh, the next one which was Origins really great game and yeah I, I beat them all other than the most recent one where you're in the car it's like i need to play that and i hear that like consoles uh the place to play it um pc not so much but 
this is like the first time that they got a Batman game right um, since probably the Adventures of Batman and Robin the Animated Series, which I had on Super Nintendo back in the 90s. Loved that game, but tremendous game. Um, Kevin Conroy does the uh, voice acting of Batman, and yeah, just amazing. All right, so moving on to Platinum Games is uh, Bayonetta, which released uh, January 5th, 2010. Um, really great action adventure, kind of beat them up. Um, very high meta score of a 90. I know a lot of people wish that that series would have got uh, purchased by Microsoft, but instead um, Nintendo is the ones helping back it. Uh, Really good game, really fun game. I actually, that genre was never really kind of one of my favorites at the time of its release. I mean, I had it, I played it a bit, but I'd never really actually played through it until after buying my house. And I was going through about a 360 game a week. And that's when I like re went through Alan Wake for the fourth or fifth time. I've, I've gone through that game like six times. Absolutely great. But yeah, and then I, I liked it. Uh, it wasn't like the best of the best, but for those that um, like Devil May Cry, I know that they either call this a ripoff or that a ripoff, or they got to argue on which one is best. But yeah, I mean, you're, you're a hot chick, you're a witch. Uh, absolutely great game. That dude that's the voice actor, I swear he's the voice uh, a voice actor in Alan Wake. Wouldn't surprise me. But yeah, really great game. Next up is uh, Bioshock, and I hate that I got my Platinum Hits version of this. Uh, with a lot, some of these games, I if I had duplicates of, I gave to a former roommate's um, son without like going oh hey maybe I should give him the platinum hits version um because I do eventually want to complete set but yeah so this game came out August 21st 2007 um developed by Rational Games and 2K Marin it's a it's an action adventure first person shooter sci-fi with a meta score of 96 it was a lot of people's um game of the year for uh 2007 and it was metacritics 360 game of the year just really crazy um here i'm obviously like oh man where am i at in the story here and what do i do uh but yeah you get these like supernatural crazy powers you're in this underwater world and great game I wouldn't put it up there um, as other people do as like one of the gr the greatest, but it's yeah a great game. Uh, my favorite was Infinite out of the trilogy, and uh, we got another ad. That's like four ads. Maybe I shouldn't have picked a forty-four minute royalty free song, but uh, yeah, Infinite I played on um, PC. Bioshock 1 and 2, I played on both PC and console. Um, just a great, great game. And I always saved the Little Sisters. What did you do with the Little Sisters if you played this? Uh, great game, great art. Yeah. The next game here, I actually almost forgot to include here because I'm so angry about what's currently going and that's Borderlands. And here again, this is the Platinum Hits edition of the uh, Game of the Year. I originally had the launch version because I remember watching that at work over and over um, in Germany, waiting for it to come out. I was so excited. Um, I'm like, oh, this game looks amazing. And to me, the like the ground... And the art and that, like the grass art, looks better than the the second game to me. That's the best, uh, like overall Borderlands game. Even though Borderlands Two is a better game because there's more to it, uh, better mechanics. Um, you just can't, to me, you just can't beat like throwing in Borderlands, playing as Mordecai, and they are making a movie. 
And it's like I pray that uh, if Mad Moxie's in it, that the only actress that I think that could pull that off is uh, Joan from Mad Men. Otherwise, there's tons of cosplayers that could easily uh, pull it off. But yeah, so this was launched uh, October 20th, 2009. Action RPG, first person shooter, sci fi, Metascore 84, looter shooter. Um, it's probably why I like Diablo series so much. I mean, I was late getting into Diablo, and for me, it was more so Diablo 3. And I know controversy for, you know, the big time people in it, but yeah, this game is great. And this is obviously, you know, the game of the year. Um, footage from the xbox one and man playing as mordecai the sniper so much fun him and then blast master brick Cathalion has a save file for blast master brick that you could play through on um play through 2.5 at level 69 it's great it's like thank you for doing that um i didn't know too much about black uh blast master brick until I came across that because I had played as all the characters, but I was always Mordecai um, in another ad. And in two, I was first zero. I mean, I ended up playing all, and that's one of my big things that irritate me about three is that they only got the four fault hunters. Only some of them got specific things, but there's not a sniper, and they're not about making another character um, like DLC, and that's sad. So the last game is also made by Gearbox, published by Ubisoft, um, and that's Brothers in Arms Hell's Highway, which is right here. I want to say this is probably the third or fourth game in the series. There were several that were on the original Xbox, and this is a kind of a strategy action FPS historical game. Meta score of only a 76. Um, don't let that fool you. It's still a good game. It's like I'm not gonna say squad based because a squad consists of two fire teams and you're usually controlling one fire team and this for the most part I can't really recall um, using two and I mean this came out September 23rd of 2008 and I probably got it. I was still deployed to Iraq at that time. I probably got it during leave um, in December where I got like a ton of games. I was just, I was on um, leave, essentially vacation from the military um, for post deployment for I want to say the 30 days. And literally every week I'd go and get like four games at the PX every Tuesday on, which was like the their launch week at that time. And, just great game um great story don't expect to like go in there guns blazing where you're like hitting the headshots and getting one shot kills it's you got to do some work in there it takes uh a lot more than you know a one shot headshot to uh get a kill on that it's pretty crazy but all right this is going to be um, wrap up part one of uh, what may be more than a four part series because I'm looking at the time here and I feel like I was burning through them a little quicker I wanted to give more backs. Maybe that's what I could do on a final episode but um, the amount that I could talk about the Xbox 360 is insane because I had so many wonderful wonderful experiences with it uh to me it's probably my favorite console of all time um i don't necessarily play the 360 hardware itself other than when i want to throw up just dance um i had sadly gotten rid of all my old guitars for guitar hero and rock band otherwise i'd be using that a lot it's just so many of these games I could play on my Xbox, one of my Xbox One X's. So I could either play them up to 4K with a little better audio. I mean, the team did an amazing job with their emulator on that. So in the next part, 
I'm gonna probably do the C's. I'm like I'm going in alphabetical order down. You know, at least one per franchise. I know with some I got multiples. Um, and again, like Borderlands 2, I have thousands of hours in that, but I never really played it on 360 until recently because at the time of its release, I was my 360 had been stolen um, moving from Germany to the States, which I got a crazy story about Mass Effect and that with the save file transferring over. And don't get even get me started on the Red Ring of Death. So that the whole history of me and the 360 will uh, have to be its own particular video um, outside of covering the games. So anyway, um, make sure to check out my store. Link in the description down below. You can get a coffee cup. You can get a t-shirt. You can get a case for your phone. You could get a flag, stickers, banners, sweaters, hoodies, socks, leggings, you name it. Pillows, blankets, you know, I don't discriminate when it comes to all that. Also, I stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, a uh, variety streamer. Um, and I do that at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So thank you very much for your time. Make sure to comment, like, subscribe, and if you dislike, let me know why. I'll see you all in the next one.